be sure to stay until the end of today's episode because I'm going to give you three simple, easy, and quick exercises that I guarantee will give you fulfillment, connection, and a life of limitless joy. Welcome to the No Bow Tie Show. I'm John No Bow Tie Swoboda, author, musician, and mindset mentor. Get ready to discover your unique edge, tools to conquer doubt, and the power to live with limitless joy. If you listen to Philip Glass's music, you'll find out that he has a minimalist view, almost too minimal to some people. When I listen to his music, I think about what he was up against as a composer. It wasn't necessarily widely accepted to do um, oscillating repetitions and, and every eight bars have one note change. You can, you can define that it is so repetitious, but somehow it's mesmerizing. And that little bit of mesmerization is so intriguing that it sucks you right into who he is and what he's about. He has a passion for the energy that he puts into it that has his signature on it every time. When you hear his music, you can identify it very quickly as either Philip Glass or a copy of Philip Glass. And he takes that ability to the edge and expresses it in ways you, that you can just feel that are very joyful to him and hopes to reach you. And the, the lesson that I learn when I listen to that is not that I want to be a minimalist composer or that, or that everybody should to be happy. It's that you can take that unique thing about you and really exercise it and develop it and express it and take your own ability to its edge so that you can experience the true deep essence of who you are and who you want to be. It will create a future that you want to be a part of. In his self-connection, it, it makes me want to connect with myself because I can hear the joy that he has in being unique. And it makes me want to be more of myself. When you hear something that resonates with you, that you find to be beautiful inside of you because they did it, it's really waking up that sense inside of you that makes you want to be unique. It makes you want to be expressive in your own unique way. When you take that external influence and internalize it, it's not that you are to do what influenced you. It is that that influence wakes up something inside of you. And balance is a key here, that you can't just rely on external inspiration to make you feel whole in your life. You've got to take these resonant moments, these, uh, these influences, and let it wake up and nurture and cultivate what is inside of you. And the balance is that you've got to be inspired, but you've got to get involved in that inspiration to express your own creativity or your own thing, whatever is that thing that you know is you wanting to happen. By letting that resonance flow through you, you can gain new perspectives. And new perspectives are one of the most important things you can engage in because it will expand your own mind and it expands your own view of your potential. And that's where you, that's where you will, will taste the joy of the possibilities of what you can do with your ideas. That expansion of perspective, when you start to internalize it and involve yourself, It'll educate you in the best way. You're going to apply yourself and you're going to see a reflection of yourself in these new ways. And some of it will work and some of it won't. But that's how you're going to grow your, your uniqueness. That's how you're going to grow your unique edge. And this allows a change in how you can connect with other people. That you have, you have new intrigue. You have curiosities. You have questions to ask. That you have things to learn from other people. Your antenna will go up. You'll be paying attention to the world in a whole new way to fill that little, that little cup of creativity that you're wanting to nourish. For me, I always wanted to be a guitar player. And so I listened to all of the stuff that, that I liked. I was listening to rock and roll all of the time. My brother sat me down and he had me listen to a classical guitar CD. 
I had never heard anything like this before, and it changed my perspective on music entirely, not just the guitar. I didn't know these kind of styles were even possible. And so the way that I saw music from that day on expanded. My questions about it were, were different. My involvement with it was more eager. I wanted to learn more from other people and how they saw the same subject. It grew my possibilities. You can shift your own perspective by being eager to want that to happen, by being eager to change and to learn and to see what, what possibilities can come from paying attention to what is outside of you and let it resonate with what's inside of you so that creativity begins to itch and you've got to do something with it. If you find yourself not so eager to change, which happens, we get in routines and we get in rituals and we also get into a perception of ourselves that we work, you know, that we live in every day. If you're stuck in that mode, the only thing you really have to do is start to change some of those routines and rituals a little at a time. But you have to do it constantly and you have to stick with this. I'm not talking about just doing it once for an afternoon. Although, a lot of joy can come from just saying, hey, I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to drive home a different direction. You're going to see new things. You're going to see new people. It's more about involving yourself in new ways and sticking with it until you see a new outcome. Along the way, one of the key components that you're going to have to deal with is self-respect and keeping balance in your life. When you begin to get involved in a creative process or just whatever is that thing that you want to grow in your life and see more of it in the future, whatever is that change, you're going to get involved and things are going to become in balance. It's okay. It's okay to be extreme to cause the change that you want, but you can't stay there. If you do, you're gonna get burnt out and you're gonna start faking it, you're gonna get worn out and you're gonna lose the true connection that you have with yourself. You can show more respect to that, that relationship with you and balance by being realistic about your energy levels, your creative levels and your thought processes. We live in a world that glorifies imbalance, but behind the curtain, Everybody has to have some balance to be effective. You have to have some balance to connect with yourself in expressive ways. When that gets out of whack, you're gonna start faking it and your energy is gonna get sucked. If you find that external situations are dictating your happiness, put on the brakes, stop now. Gather yourself, and I know, I'm not in your shoes. As sometimes these things develop up, up until you are obligated through expectation of other people, but you have got to put your foot on the brake or else your life is going to fall apart. You have to think of what you want in the future and start pecking away at that a little bit at a time. It is perfectly okay to step away when you get that feeling in your stomach that there's some angst about what's going on. You've had too much of something or you disagree with something, it's perfectly okay to step away and have your own thoughts and your own life and just go ahead and regain some of that balance. And when it gets hard to do that, the one place that I would suggest that you go is a sense of gratitude. Gratitude is the healthiest human emotion. It is the, the one emotion that no matter how much you build it, it will not offset your balance. Let me give you an example. Every day when I do, when I have an accomplishment, I take a moment and I just sit for a moment. It can be 15 seconds and I am thankful for my ability to do that accomplishment. It can be a conversation that I've had with my wife where we actually, you know, had some productive uh, feedback going on between us. It can be on my guitar. It can be just simply... Uh, coming up with a, a sketch for something I'm writing, I take a moment and be purposely thankful that I can create that, that I can use my ability in meaningful ways. As we bring this conversation to a close, the one thing that I would want you to take with you, that you could use every day, is to always be honest about your potential, not how much you're working, 
and now not the results that you're presently getting from it and not the failures that you have from it but to go in and respect your potential in an honest way because you know and i know that a little can go a long way when you're willing to get involved and work your ideas you can create a future that you do want to be part of you had, you will have to step up to the plate it will require discipline but know that that discipline is is nurturing the potential the energy about you that's going to make your life better i'm going to leave you with three exercises that you can do and are guaranteed to create a better future for you a future that you want to be a part of the first one is how to shift your perspective for the better the first thing you've got to do just take a moment and write down the thoughts that you're having about it be quick about it just get it out the second one is take out the exaggerations in your perspective this is so important because we are we are expressing our emotions through our statement not necessarily the facts and the last one is give the reasons why you exaggerated then write down the thoughts or the perspective that you would prefer to have that is realistic that you would prefer to have a simple example is let's say you wake up and you had a day planned and it's raining outside and out of your mouth comes the words we can't do anything now that it's raining okay if you write that down you can take out that we can't do anything as a big part of that and then you can put in the reason why you said it because you're disappointed. You want everybody to know you're disappointed. That's why we exaggerate. When you exaggerate in a complaint about anything, you're wanting people to know how you feel about it, not the real fact. But then the last one, you can say, well, what is the best perspective that I could have on this? And in, in reference to the rain, you can say, well, we're not necessarily going to do what we plan today. But there are a lot of other things I'm sure we can do. Let's get busy on that. The first thing that you can do is you check in with yourself and you just ask yourself how you're feeling about the situation at hand. And then after that, ask yourself if it's draining your energy or if it's adding to your energy. And when it drains your energy too much, you are out of balance. If it's adding to your energy, be sure that it's realistic, that that what you're getting out of it leads to something important. And then last, remind yourself that it's okay to remove yourself from the situation if need be. And it's also okay to involve yourself more in the situation if need be. But let me give you an example. Let's say you're in a room and everybody's watching a program and it's a, it's a family situation and something offensive comes on. It is okay to step out of the room, politely just leave. You've seen people do it and it doesn't offend you. you as a matter of fact, you might've wished you could have been that person. Another, one, another example, and this one really hits home. You've got routines and rituals that you know are habits that are holding you back. They're slowing you down. They're taking time because of pleasure before discipline. It's okay to take one night and just say, I am going to remove myself from that ritual. I'm going to do less of it tonight, and I'm going to go ahead and move on to what I know is the right thing. Do that and feel that big reward the next day. You're going to love that. By respecting these boundaries and letting people know where you're at with things, you will gain a self-respect that makes it easier for you to connect with others and reach out and be more of who you want to be and create more of the life that you want to live. If you fear that that's going to have a negative consequence in your life, start small. People will envy the respect that you're having for yourself, and they may respond to it in ways that seem negative, but start small and stay with it because really all that matters is how you feel about yourself. That's what you are always left with in the end. The third exercise, the final exercise, and the most important one is to live with an attitude of gratitude. And I know that is not easy. You've had a crappy day and you've got a guy like me saying, oh, be thankful for it. That's not how it works. Be thankful for your potential. Be thankful for your ability. Be thankful for the connections that you've made up to this point. And most of all, be thankful for the people who have helped you along the way. This is a great moment to just sit 
at the end of the day for one minute and just reflect on the power that you have over yourself, on the ability that you have to move on, and the uniqueness that you have to live in your life, that you have an opinion, that you have an idea. Be thankful that you're able to have these things and let that go let that grow into all of the other small things that you're thankful for. Let this compound until an attitude of gratitude is your best habit. And through that habit, focusing on gratitude will remind you that you can create internal joy that is yours to keep, and it's firm. It's something that you own, and nobody can take that away. You can sustain this over the long run through faith. And I'm not talking about faith in a religion, and I'm not talking about faith in, in a greater power, although those are important. I'm talking about the faith that this is how it works. That by making it a habit, the gratitude a habit, perspective a habit, and connection a habit, all of these things, that it's inevitable. It's a principle of life that if you do this on a regular basis, good will come of it. And you have to have faith that staying connected with it or that staying working it is how it's done. And of course, when you do get some results, be thankful for that. I want to thank you for joining us. We're going to use that as the topic for the show next week. Before you go, be sure to subscribe to nobowtie.com slash life. Our musical feature today is going to be a different one. I want you to go and just listen to Violin Concerto by Philip Glass. <laughs>